this evening, so we don't interrupt the meeting, so we appreciate it. Now we have an invocation by Pastor McDonald from the Crossroads Baptist Church. Welcome, sir. Good evening, and thank you for the invitation to lead the invocation time. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you with grateful hearts. We're thankful for your many blessings, your grace, um, the comfort that you give us, the guidance that you give us in life. We come tonight asking for guidance for uh, the city leaders, for those in attendance here, those who will have input in this meeting. We pray, Lord, that you would guide them in the decision making. We pray that as they make the decisions that uh, there would be what's best uh, for this city, uh, for future growth, uh, for the welfare and the well-being of the citizens of this area. We pray, Lord, your blessings on our country. We thank you for this great land that we live in. We thank you for the freedoms that we possess. We also pray for uh, our leadership at large uh, from the White House on down. And then, Lord, we pause tonight, uh, being reminded that we are in the Christmas season, and so we want to thank you for visiting our earth. We want to thank you for your grace in sending your Son to this planet that we might know uh, a Savior. It's our prayer that as we go throughout this time, uh, as we get busy and preoccupied with so many different things, that we would never lose sight about what it's all about. So again, we thank you for your love, for your grace, and your goodness, and we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate it. If I have the Pledge of Allegiance, will you use the flag in the back, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I have action on the minutes from the regular meeting, December the 1st, 2014. So moved. Second. <laughs> Mr. Collier, do you have a couple of amendments to that or changes? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I have here in the uh, under staff president, I have, I have misspelled Mrs. Lynette Dinkler's first name and Deputy Major Tech's name, and I will correct those for the record. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Any anyone from the council? Anyone? If you will call for the vote, please. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Okay, communications tonight. We have Mr. Charles Patterson, Health Commissioner of Clark County with us tonight. He'd like to address us if you would please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Village Council, our City Council, um, guests this evening. Uh, I appreciate all of you taking a, a look at the letter that we have penned for Governor Kasich. Um, we continue to have ongoing discussions with the United States EPA and the Ohio EPA regarding the Tremont barrel fill. Uh, it, is, it is not just a regional thing uh, in German Township, but we also know there's the potential for those chemicals to spread. Um, we continually push towards the view of removing all of the hazardous materials there uh, from the site permanently. The current plan that the US EPA has endorsed is to dig all the hazardous materials up, to drain the liquid off, and to put all of the solid hazardous wastes back into the ground. Uh, the letter that we've presented for your signature this evening uh, basically states to the governor that uh, the land right adjacent to it, which has the same geology and hydrogeology, uh, in fact was in the last 15 years uh, denied by the Ohio EPA to put a solid waste landfill there. We think it's very critical that if we couldn't put a solid waste landfill, that we certainly shouldn't re-entrain hazardous waste in the same hydrogeology in that region. Um, we know that this doesn't just affect us, it affects the, potentially the entire Miami Valley, 
And so we appreciate the opportunity to come before you. We appreciate uh, each of you signing on to that letter in support to Governor Kasich. We're gonna have that hand delivered uh, by our state representatives so that we make sure that it gets in Governor Kasich's hands and that it gets to the right people at the Ohio, EA, Ohio EPA to continue to support removing all the hazardous materials from the site permanently. I'll be happy to answer any questions yeah. if you have Council, any. Council, any questions for Mr. Patterson? Could you just, I have one, if you would, could you reiterate the difference in cost between the two plans that they have? Do you know that offhand? Well, there is between 15 and 20 million cost difference. <coughs> We've just had a, a recent technical uh, uh, meeting with the Ohio EPA and US EPA and hydrogeologists and we believe that number, uh, on paper, it's 15 to 20. On, on, in actuality, we believe it's more like $11 million is the difference between the two. Um, so if we're talking 11 or 12 out of 25 to, to 35, um, it makes sense for us to do this permanent and not have to continue to monitor the situation. Right now, all the closed landfills in the county uh, we monitor them on an annual basis at the health district, uh, and we're talking landfills. We're not talking hazardous waste landfills. Uh, it's a much bigger job to continue monitoring that in the future. So not only for our manpower, but for also the companies that have to pay for that in the future. Uh, and that's not really figured into the price either. So um, $11 million spread out over many companies, um, in the long run, we're going to pay for that. We are the consumers of the products that these companies sell. Um, we're all going to end up paying for that. I understand that. I understand the economies of that, but I also understand that we really don't want to put this natural resource at risk. But it could affect all of our well fields. Is that not correct? Over that is correct. Time, or it may be already. We don't know for sure. Well, we know. We know that it has not affected our well fields at this point. We're we're very confident that it has not done that. Okay. What we want to do is never have to worry about our children or our grandchildren worrying about this in the future. So um, your, your uh, signing onto this letter is very important as we present it to the governor's office. Okay. Council, anyone like to speak? I'm sorry, Mr. Craver, please. Um, when was the last time any dumping or this landfill has been used? And is there an estimation that of this, what is it called, saturation, when it, when it travels through the, Okay, good questions. There haven't been any materials put in there since 1978. Uh, the materials were put in there right prior to a change in EPA uh, regulations, which would have prevented that from happening. But when they buried it, they knew those regulations were gonna go into effect, so they hurried up and buried these so that they would be under the old regulations. Um, there has been leakage from the barrel fills, and we're right now, this month, supposed to be getting the, uh, the Ohio EPA out there to do some testing of some of the, the test wells in that area to find out how much of that chem those chemicals have leaked out. <clears throat> Does this hurt Western Clark County more than Springfield? Because I, I, I watch the Springfield channel a lot you know, in the city council. They, they constantly bring in reports you know, about this. And, uh, well, I'm the, really concerned. the way the groundwater flows, it's going to flow from the barrel fill, which is to the west of Mad River. It's going to flow towards the Buried Valley Aquifer and around the Mad River. All along the east side of Mad River are the, the nine uh, wells for the city of Springfield. And so much of the contamination, if it got out, would actually travel down the Buried Valley Aquifer, uh, but some has the potential to move over to the east to affect that. So it will come, it will migrate to the east a little bit, and then it will come southwest along the Buried Valley Aquifer. <clears throat> How can this affect someone, someone if it got here? Well, there are a variety of chemicals now. There are over 1.5 million gallons of hazardous wastes at that site right now. And so to tell you exactly how, it would depend on one of hundreds of chemicals that we found in the barrel flow. Some of the ones we're most concerned of would be solvents, hydrocarbons, and some pesticides that are in there. There are some other things that are in there that are considered hazardous waste because they're in bulk, mm -hmm. uh, like toothpaste and lipstick and stuff like that. And you know, we're, we're less worried about those things um, than we are about the highly contaminated stuff. By the time it got here, we don't believe that we, that we would see it in some, anything more than parts per trillion. And so 
it's not at the action levels, but who wants to drink water with even parts per trillion of a chemical that we could prevent from being in the water supply? I mean, it, really, at this point, we're asking you to sign onto a letter that's common sense. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't bring anything uh, less than that to you. And so we think that's why it's a great play for us to move forward uh, and talk with the governor about this, because this is common sense. If you're going to dig it all up, don't put it back in the ground. Anyone else, Council? <clears throat> Mr. Patterson, thank you so much for coming out and enlightening us on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Merry Christmas. By your leave, if you don't mind. Yes, sir, please. Thank, thank you. you so thank you to all. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I believe we're ready for the city manager's report now, if you would, please. Sure. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'd like to start out um, with the finance discussion with our finance director, Mrs. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Council and members of the public. Um, this is the November finance report. Our total revenue is $263,404.00. Our total expenses for November is $409,495.05. Our year-to-date revenue that we've collected is $4,504,641.90. That's about 92.81% of what we are anticipating collecting for the whole year. Our total expenditures for 2014 is $4,285,706.37. And we have expended about 90, 91% of our um, operating budget for 2014. We do have some um, debt payments that are in the process of trying to be um, taken care of by the end of the year. We've been holding that money on this front page of our report. OWDA has a $200,000 payment, and OPWC has $29,000. And I can go into detail if anybody would like that information on what those debt payments are for. For the income tax receipts for November, we collected $77,880.07, and it's a little bit of an increase of the discount from last year, about 10%. But our year-to-date income tax that we've collected is $927,102.42, and we're about 1% under what we collected this time last year. Um, I did add the coal revenue expense report. I think you see what I'm um, A better spreadsheet uh, to pass out if there was some uh, Council, any questions for the finance director? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Fairbacker. And I think I found my answer, so but kind of follow me along here for a second. Um, I was looking at the full report and just looking at you know the fund number 505, and I just wanted to, you know, can you explain you know um, to me and the, and the public out there? The beginning balance that has the beginning balance of a negative number. You know, negative twenty-seven thousand is unchanged. Last year, last year, last year. Okay, I'm looking at this, at this one. You know, I, I see you kind of looking at this. I just happen to see this one. I, I look at so that's the beginning balance is usually the balance that's carried over from you know the previous years and whatever. So it just happens to be a negative number. And it looks like, you know, this year, if I look at this, if I look at this, the revenue that we took in was 91400 I can say some change. Okay. The expenses was only $80,047. Now, if I look at this the way it is, it looks like that we really made a profit, you know, because our, expen our expenses is lower than our revenue. Yeah. Explain. Um, and that's why I tried to get another spreadsheet. We carried a negative balance into 2014. There was no transfer from the general fund to, in time to um, clean it out, basically, to add from the general fund the expenditures that the whole needed to balance out. 
So they carried into 2014, and then you're correct, that is the 27, uh, 27,236. Now, on the revenue report, the 90,000, we broke this down on the other report. We actually had revenue, actual revenue of 40,000. There was a $51,000 transfer from the general fund. That brings that to 91,000. Um, and again, with the carryover from last year, we're still we're showing in the red, and we talked about this last month. <coughs> Excuse me, of fifteen thousand eight hundred forty-eight dollars, of which we did a resolution um, that was passed on December first to transfer from the general fund that the fifteen thousand eight hundred forty-eight dollars. So maybe the stretch to go back from two thousand ten to current to the full revenue. My next question. And I, and I looked through this and then try to do it with fine tooth um, my old days. Anyway, and I'm, I was looking at what what it was budgeted and what the actual you know numbers were, and it looked pretty good. You know, the actual numbers was a lot less than what the budget numbers. And anything, let's just take the wages. You know, the wages was budget amount was thirty eight thousand five hundred forty five. And the year, um, the year to date was thirty-six thousand, which, to me, that shows good management as far as the time. But it didn't look like any overtime, anything else followed that. Now, and the only spot that looked was uh, that I saw concerned to me was the concessions. That's the only spot that I saw that was really, you know, am I reading this correctly? That looked really good as far as it kept with the budget? Correct. The, the concessions, the revenue from concessions, which again was a little over $12,000, the expenditure for the concessions alone was just under six, mm -hmm. so it's about 100% profit. So that was, that was a good um, sale. Uh, you know, put it in comfort. Yeah, 50%. They, they, they say 50% is good. The, I think where we fell short, and again, you, you don't know until you get into weather, but they did anticipate 30000 when they did the budget a year ago for full memberships, and we only yeah. got 7000 The year before, they sold a two-year pass, and most of that revenue was put into 2013, and then you carry forward to 2014, so that money was That you know, maybe should have been adjusted down a little bit. If, yeah, the two year was good for getting get money to be used at that particular time. I was kind of a little bit concerned about that. And I was hoping that, you know, people got the two years, you know, or they said, hey, you know, come over to the pool. That's what I was hoping. Probably had a good attendance. Um, I don't have those exact um, numbers. It's just the revenue all came in the year before, and it's a good discount for the people who wanted to buy the two years. So for the money at the door. Yes, it is almost um, fifteen thousand. Yeah. Yeah, that was that, that was. High. <coughs> I'm I'm done. Okay. Mr. Robert, I think has a question or two. Yeah, Ms. Uh, Harris and probably for. Uh, Mr. Kiko, on the pool, once again, uh, $14,022.36 for gas and electric service. I assume the majority of that is for the heater for the pool. Yes. What, what's the uh, temperature the pool kept at? Or is it, is it done by digital temperature? Yeah, we have a thermostat 80 degrees. 80? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I wanted to thank you uh, again for, I've asked for a description of the checks as briefly as you could and thank you so much i think that's good for all of us to be able to know what the check is written for and so forth and thank you for supplying that thank you for your patience during the transition on our software and mr bridges did help us set up some and mr questions. bridges thank so you for I your help we appreciate it no one else thank you very much continuing then the service discussion on service director Mr. Howard all right, thank you, Mr. Jones, good evening, Mayor and Council, members of the public. I just have uh, two quick things. I want to let everybody know 
As far as lead pickup is concerned, the city has completed the lead pickup of all four sections, two pickups each, and did a citywide in the, um, the last couple of days that they were in operation uh, late last week and early this week to go around the whole city and just make sure we picked up piles. So we are done doing collection with our leaf machine. However, you can still drop off leaves at the old Madison Street School located 600 West Madison until December 21st. And then after that, we will stop um, the uh, drop off time so we can start hauling those residual leaves out to the nursery. Uh, second item is the meter project is currently underway. Well, we are into our, almost into our fourth week of uh, meter installs. There has been a first letter that went out to all residents and the project is broken down into two sections, north of Lake Avenue and south of Lake Avenue. There has been a le first letter to each and now there has been a uh, first and second phone call to north of Lake and a second letter uh, getting ready to go out. Our initial compliance was only 13% in the first two weeks. Uh, just, uh, who knows, they said it's kind of common. People, uh, the, the letters from New Carlisle address, some people don't think of uh, what could be in there or what the letter addresses. However, after uh, the three, uh, three weeks in the tops in the north section, we are up to a 40% compliance rate of getting those changed out. So I haven't seen the latest numbers from last week. But I do know that the south, south side of Lake have gotten their letters. People have already called in to schedule. There's approximately three or four installers, and they're doing about um, 50 to 60 a day amongst them. They could, uh, um, you can tell your neighbor, everybody is game now. So if you see anybody, tell anybody, because sometimes our route addresses, um, people move in, move out, phone, phone, phone numbers we had on, um, in our system may not be correct. So you can pass it out. I've had it now on WHIO, Springfield New Sun, New Carlisle News, a couple different times. So hopefully we can get more people to set up their appointments and, and keep the installers busy. That's what they want to be here the shortest amount of time and be the busiest they can be during that time. Uh, they are also doing some minor touch-ups if uh, something occurred during the meter change-out. Um, but that is all I have, and I can entertain any questions on those or any other subjects. In Council? <coughs> Anyone? Um, the ones that they've already installed, is there any bugs? Uh, we haven't had any bugs as of uh, yet. Um, of course, we haven't read any of the new ones yet. Um, the meter we did get that got our project delayed is similar to the one we were going to get. However, it has a, a better broadcast range, which in turn hopefully will reduce the number of data collectors. We were supposed to have seven or eight of them. Uh, now we think we're going to be down to five, which in the long term is equipment that um, without a maintenance agreement we would be rely um, would be liable for down the road uh, for that aging equipment so um, nothing yet we're getting ready for some training here in the next couple weeks to do the system so really january's uh reading cycle we're hopefully we're going to have 50 percent on radio and 50 percent walking mm -hmm. so hopefully we're at least at that point yeah yeah anyone else <coughs> Uh, Mr. Lowry, would you share with how quick it was for them to put it in? Yeah, I was uh, I was at the work rescheduled hours for this uh, was the past Monday, and uh, I was at work at the base, and you know my wife texted me and says you know Neptune's here, and for example I think it was like 4:30, and my phone went off again. It was 4:36, and she said they were done. So they were at my house. I mean I'm sure they're not all gonna be that easy, but they know what they're doing. Obviously I was shocked at how quick it went. So. So it doesn't take very long. No. It's good, good, good to hear. I have a question for you that I had from someone. The meter that's on the outside of the house now, is there any reason that that needs to stay on that house? Uh, no, and, and that's, the, that's the ARB box to read the meter on the inside. A lot of people think that's their actual meter. Uh, but once they have their meter changed out, that box is completely useless to us. Uh, so they can take it down. If they plan on residing their home, they don't need to put it back up. Even if they plan on residing their home now and they haven't had their meter changed, um, they can let that box just take it off and let it hang at the bottom. So in the meantime, we can read it. But uh, no, we're not going to need those. Um, but if they have any questions about that, feel free to give uh, myself or the water department a call. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? For Mr. Kiko? Thank you, sir. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. <coughs> Continuing then, uh, the planning and zoning discussion with our planning director, Mr. Andy Bridge. Thank you, uh, City Manager Jones. Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public, I'd like to share with you 
the November 2014 activity of the planning department. We had five complaints come through the office. We issued 25 yellow tags uh, slash verbal verbal slash letter warnings. Uh, we issued five nuisance violations, zero grass violations, zero property abatements, and one zoning permit for the month. Compliance rate for the month, yellow tags to, vi to violations is 80%. And just in case that does cause confusion, what that means is when we go and put a yellow tag on a property, 80% of those are corrected before they go to the violation uh, process. I would like to share some uh, activity that's going on in the planning department uh, under miscellaneous items here. Uh, New Colorado is open for business. Uh, the business I would like to spotlight this month is 206 North Church Street. Um, it is the former daycare center behind Security National Bank. It is currently zoned central business. It's a perfect location for another daycare facility uh, or another daycare facility, excuse me, or, very, or various other permitted uses in the zone to include, but not limited to, retail establishments, business or professional offices. The building uh, has five dedicated parking spaces already uh, with the ability to add more if the business warrant types. Uh, it's a 10,164 square foot parcel. There is an existing 2,000 square foot principal structure. A previous multi-family structure was demoed, giving an additional 2,000 square foot of yard space, just in case you do need to add onto that building. You can add up, an, uh, up to an additional 3,050 square foot. And the building owner is open to the existing structure to being remodeled to accommodate a series of smaller offices if needed. If you would like some more information on that parcel, give me a call at 845-9492, or you can email me at rbridge at newcarlisle.net. Ordinance of the month. Um, I know this was on your packet, council members, for last month, but I was absent, so I would like to revisit this one. Um, 452.13c2, which is parking of commercial and heavy vehicles, uh, our ordinance state that no person shall park on any street within a residential district of the city, a vehicle which requires a commercial driver's license pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code 456.03. Examples of these kind of vehicle vehicles are school buses, commercial tractors, agricultural tractor, truck, bus, trailer, semi-trailer, uh, motorhome or any other uh, vehicle that is rated more than one and a half ton carrying capacity. That seems to be an issue with some of our uh, current citizens parking of their semi trucks in, overnight in their driveway. So just a friendly reminder that we are not permitted to do that in the city. Also another reminder, all boats, RVs, campers, jet skis, and other miscellaneous summer fun items must be stored to the side or behind your house on an approved surface such as cement, asphalt, or crushed limestone gravel. And a little note about the farmer's market. We are looking for a new farmer's market manager for the 2015 season. If you are interested or know someone who is, please contact me, Randy Bridge, at the city office, or Scott Griffith at Lee's Famous Recipe. Uh, the vacant housing report was not ran at the time that this was uh, printed off, uh, but we do have a number, and that is 74, and that puts us about the average that we are every month. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those. Council, any questions? Yes, please. Hey, Mr. Bridge, is that something new you're going to be doing on the report, uh, like with the empty building or business that's up for sale? Yeah, I, yeah, Mr. Mayor wanted me to do that. So are you talking about the new file open for business? Section? Yes. Yep. Uh, on the last one, it said I, was, I took some time off to think about what's the best way to really do the project, essentially. Right. If we do like a just one business, it might get a little monotonous. So what I'll do is I'll spotlight a business, um, a vacant parcel of land, something along the lines of that. So it's kind of different every month, but this particular feature will be staying, yes. Okay. And I also want to highlight an ordinance of the month, too. Ones that I deal with, you know, obviously in the summer we'll hit the ones that pertain to your grass, your weeds, your overgrowth. And now I want to shift into more of the accessory uh, vehicles. Um, a lot of times now people are winterizing their boats, RVs, um, and they don't know what to do. Have you heard any um, any updates or news of some, any businesses going in up at the IGA Shopping Center? At the IGA Shopping Center, I have not heard anything set in stone. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Mr. Craig. Any, any viewers about the CVS? Uh, I've heard some rumors I've that have come across. Um, again, it's all speculation. Until we get an official site plan through the office, you know, it's all hearsay at this point. Okay, my next question is, what kind of...
can't be all grass, I'm sure. No, no. Uh, a lot of this is shifted. You go to the back of it, all it's broken down. Uh, for this month, for the five complaints, we have three inoperable, three inoperable, inoperable vehicles, one vehicle parking, and one uh, doing work without a permit. So essentially, one, one uh, without a permit, a guy had given me a call, was curious to know if somebody had gate, got a uh, sidewalk construction permit, they were tearing up their driveway. So I simply just let them know, hey, you know, if you're just tearing up your driveway, your own personal sidewalk, you don't need a permit from us until when you get to the, to the curb and the sidewalk <coughs> area, you need one from us. We're carrying on a sidewalk project next spring, right? Sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anyone else? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Bridges. Appreciate it. Please enter for uh, fire discussion with uh, Chief Brad Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of council, citizens, and guests for the month of November 2014. The New Carlisle Fire Division responded to a combined total of 93 calls for service. Fire responses totaled 16 with an average response time of 4 minutes 33 seconds. The division responded to 77 emergency medical calls with an average response time of 6 minutes 2 seconds. Uh, Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 14 calls for service during the month of November. Fire responses totaled two, and emergency medical responses totaled 12. There were seven responses to Elizabeth Township, five responses to the visit village of Castown, and two responses into the city of New Carlisle. Uh, significant events for November on 11-10, North Dayton Lakeview, we did have a structure fire. The fire was confined to the kitchen area, but there was a, a small dog that uh, perished in the fire. Uh, on 11-20, uh, we had a fire mutual aid to Pike Township, 8541 Alway Road. It was a barn fire. Uh, the fire, or the barn rather, was uh, basically a total loss by the time we got there. Uh, our crews worked well with Pine Pike Township, Bethel Township, and German Township crews uh, to get that fire under control. And on 11-28, we responded again in the Pike Township to uh, 85, or correction, 3586 Ruby Drive on a structure fire. And again, uh, that building was basically a total loss by the time the crews got on scene. But the crews did work well with uh, Pike Township and uh, Elizabeth Township crews to get that fire under control. And with that, I'll entertain any questions. Council, questions? I'm just full of them tonight. So. <laughs> um, I was at the fitness club uh -huh. you know, not too long ago, and the alarm went off. Right. Okay, and it was really cold. Right. Luckily, I, <laughs> I had all my clothes on, and yeah, but they were soft. Now, can you can you explain uh, or try to go through the procedure? You know, I heard the alarm. I just kept, you know, got all my stuff together and you know, right. left. Well, there were all these teenagers kind of hung around. And I said, well, I don't know if you should leave or not leave. You know, they're there swimming suits, they're hot, uh, yet they're wet. Right. So, and I, I, I think it's a discussion. It's a discussion. <laughs> well, it's always, it's always our advice to, to evacuate the building so we have a good count of who we had in the building originally. In that certain situation, I don't think they even had a count. <laughs> yeah, that, that was more of a shelter in place in the lobby yeah. scenario because just the alarm was going off. There was no smoke or fire hazard. Um, I'll accept the lobby part of it. That's okay with me because I, I can still see everybody. But the you know our best advice is to evacuate the building, get everybody out, just so we can guarantee that it's not a fire or smoke issue. Uh, that particular uh, call, it was a, a malicious pull at one of the pole stations in the gym, a small child, we caught him on the videotape pulling the uh, alarm. Um, I don't have an issue with the small child pulling the alarm because it was a really small child, two and like three years old. Uh, my issue lies with the child's father because he collected the child and ran out to the car and took off. So uh, if, if, you pull, if your child pulls an alarm, be a responsible adult and inform us of what alarm got pulled because it took us a little bit to find which pole station it was. But circling back to your original question, yes, evacuating the building is always the best idea. I know it's everybody was in the pool or whatever, or it could be sweaty or wet in the pool, but still, you know, try to harbor in the vehicle or something outside, someplace you can get warm. Anyone else? 
Yes, Mr. Um, I was at the uh, the Christmas, uh, well there wasn't the parade, but they had Santa come in and everyone was there. Right. And I just want to thank you for allowing the people putting that on, the, the group, to, to come inside of the firehouse. I think that worked out really well. They had to come to band and then, sure. and it was great. Everybody had a great time. Oh, we always we always welcome everybody into our home. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you, Chief. No Thank problem. Uh, please discussion turn that over to Sergeant Ralph Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Jones, Mayor, Council, and citizens. For November, reports by Nicolau deputies, we had 23. Reports by a Clark County deputy, there were 18. And reports total for the city was 41. Miles patrolled, 2,872. Miscellaneous files, 164, and follow-up investigations, we had one. Under traffic information, the guys made 115 traffic stops. Citations issued, there were 85. Out of all that, the OVI arrests were three, and there was five charges. Driving under suspension, 12. Parking citations, 21. Abandoned vehicles that were towed, zero. Non-injury accidents, we had four, and injury accidents, we had zero. Under arrest information, criminal adult arrest, there were 11. Criminal adult charges, there were six. Criminal juvenile arrest, there were two. Criminal juvenile charges, there were three. And one arrest, there was seven. And that's part of that top number. Um, that's how I come up with 11. Once filed, there was three. Special interest, assault, one, breaking and entering, zero, and that's great for this time of year. Thefts, five, vandalism, one, 911 hangups, we had 11, phone harassment, there was one. We had domestic violence with assault, we had two, domestic, domestic violence verbal, there were three, lockouts, three, peace officer, one, alarms, eight, and assist, 58. And on November 14th, 2014, the Clark County Communications Center received a 911 call reporting a stabbing at 417 Villa Drive in New Corral. The caller reported their neighbor had been stabbed and provided suspect information for the deputies dispatched to the scene. Deputies responding to the scene found a suspect covered in blood in 400 block of Villa Drive. The suspect, Troy Tester, was taken to the hospital for injuries sustained in the altercation. The victim, Trace Graham, was also transported to hospital for several lacerations. After an investigation, the subject, Troy Tester, was arrested for felonious assault and placed in the Clark County Jail. And it is confirmed that Clark County will be putting in two desktop computers at the substation and taking care of the maintenance for the computers at no cost to the city. The same will be done for the computers and the patrol cars for New Corral. That's my report, and I will entertain any questions. Council, any questions? Mr. Lowry? Sir, I have a couple. Yes, sir. Uh, one on the set, if I break it in there and do the set, it looks like a car test. I'm sorry? I said on the test, we have a five, we break it in the zero, the car test, the car is one block, the people just reach in and pick up all of them? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Next question. I have heard you and other deputies say that it's not happening. Very much very really going on all And it's also an app on the phone. It's okay, so I won't feel too bad about this, but I'll never ask you what the is going to be going on. But if we get to the accuracy, we can say approximately 21 hours per week. It is 32 hours a week. Yes. Thank you very much. Anyone else? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yes, I just wanted to clarify that, though. Although they may not be assigned to a new call at that particular time, we do have the township car that is still in the area. So even though we don't mm -hmm. have the dedicated car during those 32 hours, there is still coverage in New for Life. And we do have the area. Yeah, we, we have an area car too that's also. Right. You have That's correct. Thank you. Of course. Um, the other day, uh, 
my wife and I, and we're at the fitness club again, you know, late at night, you know, get there, we get ready to close. And, and this guy uh, was asking the tenant, and he wanted to know where Church Street was. So I take him to Church Street, this is an And so we took him down to Church Street, but he didn't know where he should have gone. You know, and we dropped him off at the corner of church in Jefferson. At, when we were driving away, I looked at my wife and I thought, you know, maybe I should have called that in as somebody suspicious. Because he told me that I just got out of, out of jail. It was like five days on uh, Sunday, but he smelled like alcohol, so I mean, he just get out of jail. But should I have called the deputy? And when should we? Well, you actually put your family at risk by putting me in the car with you and being intoxicated, not being patted down. You had no idea if you had a weapon on him. Anytime you feel like there's a complaint, you feel free to call us. And if it's something that uh, doesn't merit immediate attention, the dispatcher will tell you that. Uh, we basically will make up your mind for you. So that's pretty easy. Any emergency that all crash, uh, fires, uh, any of those type of emergencies are 911. We do have a non-emergency number. Um, but if you don't know what that is and you call in on the emergency line, if they are extremely busy, they will give you the non-emergency number and they have you call back or put you on hold. Um, but our dispatcher are very qualified to deal with whatever your situation is. And they're quite frank about what you need to do. Anyone else? Mr. Cohen, please. This is for Sergeant Underwood. Sergeant Underwood, I just wanted to share this with everybody. I live out in the township off Johnson Road, and sometime last week I received a phone call related to some uh, breaking that was occurring out of the area. And brief description of what was the company what to watch for. Could you pass on to him that I really do appreciate that that occurs and it kind of put me on watch and it was ironic because the next day he indicated there was some people traveling around in a pickup truck that were checking to see if people were home and they were breaking down the back door and ironically I don't know if it was just my imagination but a pickup truck pulled in my driveway the next day kind of sat there for and I flashed the front my front lights on the house and he kind of drove off and left and I thought hmm just wonder if that was connected to the message I had received on the phone but let him know how much we appreciate out that way that that's happened I certainly will anyone else counsel anyone else sergeant I just want to say to you and also the deputies in Nicolau thank you for all the services that you've been providing for us we really do appreciate it and these reports are very handy for letting us know how well it's being served. Thank you. Appreciate will, that. Thank you. I will pass it on to deputies right. tomorrow. Continuing under informational, before we get to the items on the management report, I did want to point out something I said on your desk um, before the meeting started. And this was brought to my attention this past Friday. There's a magazine called the Business Journal in Dayton and they did a survey of the best places to raise a family in the Dayton region. And I'm proud to say that New Corral was 16 out of 35 places, best places to raise a family. Of course, that's not unexpected. We all knew this was true, but it was nice that they documented it. Um, and we were actually the top score in Clark County. Um, so it was pretty, I thought it was pretty exciting. I've got a link to this page on our website if anybody's interested in seeing that article. Um, and then continuing with the management report, um, we had a work session already once to discuss the levy and now we need to move forward with talking about um, additional cuts that may need to be made. Um, I would like to try to schedule another work session for after the first of the year. Um, we need to have this discussion in order that we can be better prepared to do our 2015 budget, which is due in March. We have to know what's going to be in place and where we stand and hopefully at that time mid-January we may know how we close the year. Um, it'll be close to that point anyway. It'll be pretty close if not there. So um, I would suggest 
uh, the 12th of January, which is the, the first Monday after our, that we don't have a council meeting in January, but. That's the second Monday then. Yes, it would be. Um, that's just a suggestion that. Council, how do, how do we feel about the second Monday? Would that work for everyone? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to. So why don't you do that, sir? I'm, I'm just real talkative today. You are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the second Monday in January for the work session at uh, 6.30. And where would you like to have it? Right here. Thank at, you. Smith, at Smith Park. This wonderful log cabin. Second. And that is the 12th, just to verify the date. Yeah. Second. Yes. There's a second. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I don't think so. Any further discussion, everyone? If you can call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yeah. Mr. Craybon? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor Block? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Board session on block 112 14 at 6 30 p.m. Here. 15. 15. Oh. <laughs> Let's all start practice. In the wrong year. No. Okay. Now, let's see January 15th. Okay, then continuing also with the um, informational items along these same lines as the cuts. Um, as, as much as I don't want to have to do this, I think I have asked council to be ready to talk about this tonight. Um, it came to my attention that our deputies will be bidding their shifts for the following year very shortly. And if we do have to cut one or two or whatever you would decide, I think it's only fair and that we only owe them this much that we let them know as soon as possible in advance so that they have the um, chance to bid for a better shift and not get stuck with whatever might be left over when we got around to telling them in January or February. So that's what I would like to discuss at this point. Right. That's all who Yes, sir. Sorry. Give me two seconds to this place before he makes any further. Sure. Go ahead. Mr. Lowell, if you'd like to start us out. Yes. Mr. Mayor, this may take a little while, and I'll be appreciate the time. Okay, if you could hold it down for three to five minutes, we'd certainly appreciate it, okay? I'll do my best. Thank you, sir. But I do have something I want to say. At the last meeting and at the work session, I made the statement that I would not, probably would not vote for full clubs, okay? I have thought about this on a daily basis. Have all these figures now, okay? It boils down to this. You just can't do this. We need to be 15 or 30 times and we're real proud of it, as I am and I'm sure everyone else is. If you want to drop it down to 32 or 33, go ahead and lay off our two deputies and see how far it goes, okay? Go down real quick. Because I can tell you, people's not going to move into your town. Because we're swimming. Excuse me, Mr. Lauer, I'm sorry. They, they can't hear you down here, and I'm even having a hard time hearing you if you don't mind. I'm sorry, if you can speak up just a little better. Okay. What I'm, I don't know where I left off, where you want me to start over. Uh, if you'd like to start over, that's okay. fine. Okay. Yeah. First and foremost, okay, at the last couple of meetings, I said I would be against closing the New Carlisle Swimming, okay? And I've thought about it on a daily and nightly basis. And I firmly believe that it is every person sitting here to do the best to protect the citizens of this city, to the best that we can do, okay? We're not protecting the citizens, the citizens of the city by keeping the swimming pool open, okay? We are providing some fun for them and things to go out and do, and I know right there it says my daughter-in-law and my two grandkids, and they go every day, and I'm sorry for that, but Kim, and I'll just go about a couple of different things here because I've had some figures and whatnot up. You handed me this at the beginning of the meeting, at the beginning of the meeting about New Carlisle being 15 out of 35 of desirable places to live. If you want to take off one or two deputies, you'll watch it drop down to 35 or 36 real quick. Uh, people's not going to say I won't move into New Carlisle because it doesn't have swim pool. But I can guarantee you they'll say they won't move in because we don't have enough police protection, okay? Now, I was somewhat taken back. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lauer, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but 
committees for purposes of just following the order of, of running the meeting and with all due respect, I think it's good that we have the discussion but not exactly pointed at the manager because the vote is going to be up to council and the item is up for discussion. The budget is what it is and in accordance with your rules of Robert's order, the discussion needs to be held for input and for council to be able to make any vote that needs to be made. I'm not voting. I, don't, I guess I'm not understanding what you're saying. I'm sorry. Just for purposes of the discussion, the manager has brought up the point of you have your budget, you've got your workshop, and here's the suggestions. But I don't. I just don't think that it's fair for the form of the meeting. She's not wanting your community to drop down to 32 by any stretch of the imagination, but asking for all of you to offer your input onto what the issue is. Okay. And so I just wanted to redirect the conversation in that. Thank you. Thank you okay. for that. I understand. And it was met with the utmost respect. No, and if I do it wrong, I'm fine with that. Okay, tell me again because I'm going to want to bring something else up here. We're not going to talk why we should or why we shouldn't, and if we have the money or if we do not have the money, we're afraid. You absolutely may discuss that, and that is part of the process for the employee. Okay. My point was is that your manager doesn't want, doesn't want to lay anyone off. No, I understand that. I'm not blaming her. No, I'm not blaming her. That was, that was basically No, I was not blaming the kids. She just had ideas like all the rest of us. Okay. And I'm mean, just going to be straight out. I don't agree with her ideas, okay? And the reason being, and that's with all due respect to him, you know, uh, with all respect, okay, rushing in at $20,000. Cool, fifteen eight. I'm not adding this up, okay? When Bell Manor comes around, we move in here, we're going to say they want about probably eight hundred dollars a month. I know it's twelve hundred. It's a twelve hundred grant. But it's by about the time eighteen. You, that's for rent. Right. But by the time you add the extra insurance, the extra utilities, and everything, yeah. let's say it's eight hundred dollars. Okay. Westcat's five thousand dollars a year, and it's home. I, our last report was one point five people per trip. Okay. That's a waste. Okay. I think by cutting the pool, the brushing the land. What's going to come with Bell Manor? I don't know when that's coming. I, I really don't. But I think we need to look at the budget the best we can look at it for every penny and not cut any police officer in the system. Throw the pool as necessary. Take away the brush and then pick up. But for God's sake, leave the police. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. It's, you know, okay. We'll go to somebody else now. Who will Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, with brush and limb pickup, it costs us twenty-three thousand. But that's already city workers working. Will they just, or will they do something else? Because if they're, I mean, if they're still working the same hours, it's still going to cost us the twenty-three thousand, maybe a little less. But that's not really a budget cut per se. We won't be hiring the temporary employees that we normally hire during the summer for the mowing. All right. Um, we, we, right now we have two temporary jobs, and the one temporary person is still on. All right. How much is that temporary employee? How much does it cost? Because I mean, it's only twenty-three thousand dollars for what we're doing currently. What we discuss budget. Uh, so will they not work at all? Or will they still work if we cut that? Like, and if we do cut them, how much does it actually say? It? Because aren't all the city workers participating in brush and limb pickup, or just the temporary focused on that solely? Our three-person street department with the two temporaries do, the, do the, all the street all the street work. All right, so it'll be a from five people to two. All right, so it won't be a twenty-three thousand dollar cut then. It'll be a little it'll be less because if we're just cutting off two temporary workers, it'll be less than the twenty-three thousand because the other three employees will still be working things in the city. Correct. Uh, I would assume yes. All right, so how much would that actually cut for us? Out of the budget for the two that we don't hire that. I did save you the numbers for what we would save if we did not have to put those people doing I didn't like, figure out what they else they would be doing because they are a number of jobs. But, 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 they, but my point is they would still be doing, they would still go do different jobs. But Mr. But Rose, I think we're getting off kilt here. The question was about deputy discussion, not about street department and other departments. Well, this is a related point with the budget as a whole. I, I understand. And that's, that's, why we're have a work session. Right. that's why we're going to do that on the 12th. And all of that can come out at that point. All right. The discussion right now is about nothing to discussion, and that's what we're here trying to decide among the seven of us to give her some kind of input from us at this point. Yes, sir. Let's, let's go to Mr. Zanbach next, if you would, please. I have two suggestions. One, we need the sheriff's time. Renew the contract. 
graph specifying two decimal additional money into the police department. Why the police department? This is the biggest eater of money in our budget. I mean, it, it, and it is the only one over which we really have any legitimate control. Ethan mentioned, Rick mentioned, we've been talking about that this time. You know, saving $15,000 a year, for goodness sake. <laughs> Why bother? We, we spent $15,000 and nearly that on a copy of the Nazi. We, you know, we have to worry about some serious money here. And it's initially the only place I can see a big chunk of savings is through the police department. And either hold it off until the last minute, which is renew the contract for four of them through May, or renew just for two. And if we get that levy through, then we can re-examine it, which is why I say true may the contract. Yes, ma'am. In answer to that, I wanted to let you know, and I may not have expressed this earlier, the sheriff did say that that contract is negotiable later if we go to start with, and then it passes in May, we could add two more at that point. So it's not like we would be stuck with just the two for the entire year. He would be willing to negotiate after the election in May. How about And, and I don't want to renegotiate. I think we need to sign a contract that ends June 1, and then we can renegotiate a new contract. Not hope that the sheriff sees our point of view and says, well, yeah, okay, we'll get around to it. You know, I, I, want it. <laughs> I think May 31st or 30th, I mean, 31st. <laughs> I think that's when our contract with the sheriff should end on this side, because we'll know finally where we stand with the governor. And that's my thought. Thank you, Mr. Zambach. Mr. McIntyre, you wanted to say something? I have to follow him now after yes, that. Yes, you did. Yeah, yes. really. Well, I think based on Mr. Zambach said, I think is, is a, a decent compromise. We can try to work through this. What I was going to bring up is, you know, no one wants to cut police, obviously. Um, I would just wanted us to think about how much of a buffer room we wanted to have in the general fund. How much money? Because what now? It's what four hundred dollars. That's exactly. it's projected to be four hundred dollars <laughs> at the end of 2015, which isn't obviously anything. And for us to think how much we really need in there, and then decide where can we make cuts. And that was going to go into this big speech about how we can't cut the police. We need to cut the places. But then we have this great compromise. I think a great idea coming from Mr. Zamlock. I think that's something we should really think about entertaining. It looks like a way that we can steer the ship um, and, and get to where we need to be without without uh, too many problems into the future. Thank you. Anyone else on this side? Yes, Mr. Kohlbacher first, please. Um, <laughs> like you said, and how can I follow that? You know, but, you know, Dick, I think you have a good compromise. You know, I really do. And I was the same way. I was going to comment. I was, I was going to say, um, you know, close the pool, keep the place, you know. Uh, we need to be safe. Um, you know, the, you know, one of the things that people look at is, you know, the safety of the area to move into. You know, and residents need to be safe, too. Um, I had, you know, some people out there, you know, canvassing, you know, and, and taking impromptu survey. I did some impromptu survey. And almost everybody says, you know, if they had a choice between, you know, one or the other, keep the police, you know. And I was going to come in here the same way, Bill, and I think you know that, you know, that I was going to come in here and say, look, this is the way it's going to be. And, uh, but I like the compromise to do. I really do. You know, uh, we have an ordinance coming up, you know, that's going to be supposed to extend the contract for, what, one month, two months, you know? And could that be revised? You know, is it possible for that to be revised? We don't have any more council can't. meetings this year, so that would be without, until January 5th, we would be without a 
contract. Can we move to amend? Well, could, plus he doesn't know how much the new money is going to be. Correct? That's basically right. we're holding off for one month is because he's waiting for the union to negotiate their new mm -hmm. contract. Is why he went up to wait. Yeah. Could be right. Right. Could be 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 right. But you know, if I had my drivers, if I had my, if I had my drivers, you know, um, like I said before, an old Cajun guy told me, you know, look at the hole in the purse, you know, because that hole can get bigger. You know, look at the little little things first because that big thing, you know. So you know, I would, you know, my thought would be, you know, look look at those things before I look at the police. But I like. I also like your compromise. We could do. We could do that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one second here. Yes, you. One second. People were in favor of keeping the police. However, that's why we had the election in November, and people voted it down. And that was the intent was for the police expenses, and it was voted down. In my opinion, they gave us our marching orders at that point. Um, second of all, if we wait until May to make a decision, once again, our deputies are hung out to dry and going to be left with whatever jobs are available because they have already bid their jobs in December. They will have to take whatever would be available in May, which I'm sure will not be the shift or the job that they would prefer. That's why I wanted us to meet tonight to try to give them a heads up. I felt like we owe them that, if nothing else, to give them as much advance notice as possible and not stretch it out for a month. I personally would not want to think, is this the month, is this the month, is this the month? I just think that's a water torture. Well, that okay, thank you. Mr. Perry Brock, if you would, I think Mr. Lowry would like to say something now. That, that's true, and we probably do all of that. We, we as Mr. city Lowry. council, also owe citizens of New Carlisle something, too. Thank you. Know. So, and, and the other feedback I got is, you know, the... You know, the information was not brought out to them, you know, so that they could understand. You know, and we, we agreed on that in the work session, that maybe the information was jogged a little bit. So, uh, yes, you know, there's nobody likes the police better than me, because I don't think anybody on the city council, they, they've visited my house probably several times. You know, I don't know if it's location or what, but, and, you know, so nobody likes it better than I do. Okay, Mr. Curry, if you don't let Mr. Lowry no. go now, please, please. Uh, I agree, you know, with what you just said. I think a lot of people may have been confused. I think that, you know, and I'm not saying that it wasn't, you know, it was someone, someone's fault or not ours or so. I'm not pointing fingers, but it, I do think it was a, a slight, you know, it was a little bit confusing looking at those signs, and I think that may have played a part of into that role. But also, I want to you know think about. And I think you know it's a no-brainer. Keep police or close the pool. I mean, you need to you, you need to keep the the police. But what I don't want to see happen is is, and I'd like to do it. You know, Mr. Zambox, that hold off if possible, because in in my mind, you know, and if you think back at some of the schools where they were asking, you know, for example, you know, Tecumseh trying to get their levies passed, and then when they when they didn't get it passed, they said, if we don't pass this, we're going to pull busing. Well, a lot of people took it as a threat. You know, you're gonna, you know, we don't, we don't get this money. We're gonna pull your buses. Well, I don't think it was necessarily a threat. It's just that it was one of their biggest cost savings at the time. So, my thought is, is if if we could hold off and not get rid of anything now, because I, I think if you close the pool now, that's what people are gonna say. They're gonna say, well, you never mentioned you were gonna close the pool if this didn't pass. You only mentioned the police. Now, I'm not saying we should get rid of the police, like I said, but I think people will think it is something, you know. To the nature of well, they're trying to strong arm us and taking away our entertainment and the things that bring us, you know, joy and fun and entertainment to the city. Uh, you're going to take it away just because we didn't vote, and then I think you're going to hurt yourself even farther down the road. It's just my opinion, you know. So just I think you know you might want to keep that in mind as well because I think you know when Tecumseh took the busing away, and I hope not. I think it really hurt them that people they, they may never get the busing back. Who knows? So thank you. Sergeant, if I could call on you maybe to, about the bidding process and so forth, if you don't mind. Uh, with, you've heard a few comments up here about maybe holding off and uh, waiting a few months, waiting till May or see what happened. How does the bidding process work in that respect? Well, the bidding process has already started. And what happens is Uniform Patrol, which these guys are a part of, 
a sheet will go out to them and they have a chance to pick what day, what shift they want to work first of all, and then what days of the week they want off. Uh, if this passes them up, um, this deputy right here, he's not going to know what shift he's going to be on until we start trading. And what I mean by that is until the final decision is made here of what's going to happen, and then he has to look at what's open. So he may take it instead of a first shift off with uh, Fridays and Saturdays, he may get a third shift off with Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And uh, I would want to be in that situation. I understand your concern for the citizens, and I understand they have spoke. Uh, but also I'm looking after my people, too. Um, that's a tough situation to put a man in. Also lives in this community. Uh, we, all of the deputies up here now live in this community. And that's been a, a big plus. We've cut down on mileage almost 1,000 miles a month, if not more. Uh, certainly saving on fuel right now. And, and we have made sacrifices. We've made big sacrifices. And it's brought up how much we are uh, the big chunk out of the budget. Um, I would safely say it could easily be a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand more dollars a year if you paid for every service that the police department gave you. So uh, I think you're right. Maybe we need to talk to the citizens of the community and inform them of that. So I know you want me to talk about the bidding process that happens with the uh, command officers also. A sheet will go around. You will bid what shift you want to work and what days off you want. Then that goes back to the union, and they choose by seniority what you're going to get. Uh, it's been a long going process. By now, most of them know where they're going to land already, uh, just by working with each other and knowing who's going where. Um, that just takes that benefit away from them. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your input. Uh, I haven't been able to speak so far, if I may, real quickly. I know if we were to lay uh, two deputies off, from what I understand, it was $180,000 would be a savings. Is that correct? That's a general fund. And right now, we're saying that we would have under $400 at the end of 2015. Is that correct? It's projected. And the last thing we want to do is go into a physical watch again, from what I understand. Right. If, one, if one unexpected thing happens, that $450 is all we've got. We're going to be able to watch. The last thing I think any of us want to do is not to have the sheriff protection here that we have now. I mean, that's obvious from what everyone said, and I'm included in that. But we still have to find money to cut from this budget that's coming up. Um, I like some of what Mr. Zambach said about trying to have a happy medium and, and uh, seeing how it goes in May again. We are putting it back on again in May, from what I understand. We'll definitely let everyone know that it is a police protection levy is what we're doing, I believe. So that's why we're having this discussion to try and figure this out. Yes, sir. I just want to point out that, and I, I want to throw everything out there for you, that if we cut down to two deputies, that leaves two, and they are still, those two are still entitled to days off, and they can take up to 10 days off. And if they do that, you could have one deputy up here in New Corral for as many as two weeks. So I'll let you know. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds, you wanted to say something? Uh, this is dealing with Mr. Zambach's idea. This is actually a question for the law director as well. For the Section 2, uh, can we move to amend? Parliamentary procedure allows you to move to amend, but this is dealing with the contracts. This is what I have to ask you. Did we move to amend it to go till May of the end of May of 2015? The emergency ordinance we're talking yes, about. Yes, because he's talking about the emergency ordinance is on for the city. Because I, remember, I know you can move to amend, uh, and I see it all the time at the state house. So I was wondering if we can move to amend instead of saying you guys are out on. Anyway. That would be assuming that the sheriff would agree to that, too. That was my question. Like, like, do you think it's possible he would agree to such a thing? Or? Well, without knowing he had incentive to get a party to join in your contract, you can't do it. 
All right. Yeah, that, that was a contract. That's why I was worried about. That's why I wanted to make sure. And so. That's that's why I asked you. But we can't table it until. Oh no. We don't have the meeting tool. And you won't have a contract. Mr. Lauro, I think you wanted to say something again. Yeah, Ms. Harris, I just had a question for you. What would be, and I know there's probably not technically the right answer, but what would be, the, in your mind, what's the general safe zone here to cut? I mean, in, in, what are you thinking? 80,000, 200, 150? I mean, I know obviously you could set back, you know, cut 80,000 and we have, you know, some natural disaster that wipes it all out and we're back to square one. But I mean, what's... Somebody else want to speak for Mr. Zandlock, did you? Can you say something? for any type of a vote or anything on this at this point? Oh. No, I'm talking to the city manager now. On the deputy discussion, again, we're back on deputy discussion at this point. Exactly, with the other cuts later. Um, and my goal was to try to help the deputies so that they were not going to be left out in the cold in January have to find mm -hmm. a job. Um, they don't want to. They don't want to leave. We don't want to let them go. However, I think it's only fair if we're going to let them go that we let them know as soon as possible. I understand that, but it, it doesn't sound like that we would have a consensus here without a work session to be able to figure out exactly where we want to be on this issue at this point. I would think right? that's what I've been hearing from people. Anyway, am I wrong on what I'm saying? I mean, it sounds like there may be other alternatives to see what happens in May and not. I understand we have to, to cut money. I mean, everybody out there should know that now that we're... Well, I heard Mr. Lowry say, say I also heard Mr. Lowry say, and I heard, actually I heard every one of us except me say, 
we really, as a last ditch effort, would not go with a minimum of four deputies as we could have been in. So, to do as you said, it seems that our intention is to continue the force as we currently have it. But there's still that ugly, nasty little devil out there. <laughs> we may not be able to afford it. We are going to look at, in our work session, every alternative to cutting the police department. And if we can come up with enough cuts here and there, five or 10,000 doesn't mean anything, but if we can get 10, five or 10,000, now all of a sudden we got 50 to 100 grand a year, and you said that's going to help us a whole bunch. So I think that's what we're going to look at at our work session. I think it's our intention, and this is what I've heard. I'm just trying to more or less summarize for the group of us to continue with four deputies into the foreseeable future. But I really would like that escape clause in there for me. <laughs> if we get that back we, I, I'd be happy to put four guys on until May or until June 1st, through May, through June, to life of where. But right now, we know we're going to have four of them in January. How much is it going to cost us come February? What if our contract with the sheriff goes up $2,000 a month? Where are we going to get that $24,000 out of the $400 left over? That's going to present a problem. And that's what our work session is for. We're dealing with two different animals here. One, are we going to keep Ralph and his group? We want to. And we're going to find every way we can to. That's what I've heard tonight. Yes. Does anybody disagree with that? Oh. Does that pretty much answer your question as far as take back home? Yeah. If they can guarantee me another three hundred thousand dollars here in income, I'll guarantee them right now that the contract for fifty-two weeks is not a problem. But nobody can guarantee any of this. So until we have more information, it's hard to get any more plan. <coughs> So it seems like the consensus is to wait until after we have, first off, we're going to have a ordinance tonight that we need to pass to continue the deputies through January at that point. Then we would have our work session and discuss this further at the work session, see what kind of cuts we can come up with, and then also have the deputy discussion at that point. Have I been hearing? Yeah. Council, is that what I'm hearing at this point? Does sound reasonable? Yep. Yep. Okay. Mrs. Jones, I think that's where we're at at this point. Can I ask um, a question first? Can I ask a question so first? We have one question. Okay. Yes. So we, we have the work session on the 12th. Mm -hmm. We come up with some kind of plan. Is that going to be long enough to come back and do come back with another contract? Contract will be up. We're going to have to extend it at the end of January anyway, so we'll be having to do another ordinance probably the second meeting in January at this point, anyways. So that would be a week before. It may just be extended another month if the sheriff doesn't know what the rates are going to be yet. Right. Okay. okay. Mr. Jones, if we could continue on now, is that all right if we continue? That was in my report, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, we're finished with the city manager's report. We need comments from members of the public. Anyone like to speak out in the audience this evening? Could you go up to the podium, please? Give your name and address, sir. Sure. We'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Philip Fisher. Uh, I live on the corner of Linden and Scott, and I'd like to take this time to bring to the council's attention a very dangerous situation that's occurring, and hopefully we can come up with a solution before anything else happens. Uh, with your permission, I approach council to hand out some information. Is this one about the bushes? I think we've had this conversation, haven't we? 
No, sir. It's not the motion? Okay. No, sir. If, if you have information that you would like to pass out, please do so. Now. Or maybe Mr. Reynolds can get it from you and you can go back to the board. Well, there's, there's quite a few. Yeah. This is the location of. We, we can share. That's good. Yeah. Go ahead, share. Or third. Scott and Scott. Oh, here. Yeah, he was right here. Uh, uh, if you notice, on Linden Avenue, there are no curves or sidewalks. So the majority of pedestrian traffic that goes down that street walks in the street. Uh, on Labor Day weekend, that Sunday, the six winds has occurred there, but on that corner of Scott and Linden, there's no stop sign. So as traffic proceeds down Scott, south on Scott, to that intersection, Instead of slowing down or even stopping, they cruise around that corner, get the gas, and blow down London Avenue to the stop sign on the street. On Labor Day weekend, I had a car or a truck come along and take out 50 feet of my chain link fence because, in fact, that's what occurred if it came down London Avenue. And your other pass goes down and Lost control of the kid around that corner. Now I'm familiar with the property you're talking about. All the flowers, you put a lot of flowers yeah. on. It's very pretty, thank you. And again, that's that is affected my property, but again, I'm still looking out for my fellow citizens, especially the older folks that walk down that street with their grandchildren and their pets. Uh, this last weekend, Sunday afternoon, at five, approximately 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I had a note while my wife and I were standing in the front room. I had another vehicle. Apparently, come around that corner, we heard a loud ass explosion. Part of my friend. Uh, my wife got up and looked out the window. She seen a red pickup truck speeding down Linden Avenue to the stop sign at Linden and Main Street. Take a right, headed out of town. Uh, you see, they came around the corner. And you see where they lost control, went them to the side, the field across the street from where I live, because you pass them down. It's overcorrected, came across the street into my driveway, smashing into a parked vehicle in my driveway. The force was so much that it forced that vehicle 10 to 12 feet across the driveway, uh, sustaining major damage to my vehicle. And again, if that was a person or a mom or dad walking their kid, there'd be nothing left. Uh, this is a situation, this is the problem that I'd like to ask you folks to help me come up with a solution. Uh, the officer that came out and took the report that afternoon was quite surprised that there is no stop sign on that corner of Scotland. My solution, what I'm asking you folks tonight is, what can I do to have a stop sign right there? Our service director could probably answer that to a degree, I believe. Uh, again, when we get into stop sign and any kind of sign, we will get into the uniform code of uh, uh, traffic and designs and see if it warrants. Yeah. Because um, if it does not warrant, um, even though there may be instances where we personally think it is, and if it is not and an accident occurs and they, because they use that sign, then there could be suit on the city for using a sign that's not warranted. But I'll definitely have to go through those steps first, and then uh, we will let you know if we can warrant or will not warrant a stop sign, a yield sign, or something to that effect. Okay. Plus two, at that intersection, uh, if anybody's aware of a few brewbakers, old place sits across the street, that stuff back in that pool. So as people come shooting down Scott Street, and normally it's people that are unaware of the neighborhood, because people that live in the neighborhood realize what's going on there, 
may not only fail to negotiate the turn across that reach, there's been many times, instead of making that turn, they continue shooting straight through that private property's owners down their driveway until they reach the back of their house realizing, oops, this isn't a street, this is somebody's personal property. Okay, sir, if you would, if you could give your phone number and your name one more time, throw it please, so they can you contact you on this. Give it now. Well, give it to him if you would. I'm sure. And that, that yes, way so he as far as your comment, sir, uh, as far as is there a stop sign that's warranted at that location? If you look down at good old lumber at Davis and Ohio Street, there's the same exact situation set up there as is on the corner of Scott Linden. There's a stop sign there. Stop sign. Correct, and that's a commercial um, zone area. There's a couple of different things you have to look at. I'm not saying yes or no, I'm just sure. putting this stuff to go through. Okay, and, and once again, as you all say, you know, this is just an accident waiting to happen. We've already had two just trying to prevent a major one from happening. And going back to Labor Day weekend when we took out the Chamberlain fence, if that fence wasn't there, it would have been in my house. I'd like to thank you for coming tonight and letting us know this sure. is the first that we've heard of this circumstance. So, you know, in, in the future, if you want to give us a call ahead of time, we'd be glad to look into it for All you right. anytime like that. But right. This is the first that we've heard of this. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate okay. taking and giving your time to allow me to speak and present this. Uh, thank you for coming and letting us know. Thank All you, right. sir. Appreciate it. Mr. Lyle, I'd like to say something. Uh, Mr. Kitko, does, just for example, let's say a, a, a stop sign is a you know, warranted for, for this situation. Does is, is speed bumps fall into the same type of criteria, or are they less, you know what I'm saying, are they easier to get into place versus, say, a signage, stop sign? Uh, signage, signage is easy. They, they, all, they all serve their own individual purposes. And again, I have made copies of that uh, manual that talked about speed bumps that time when we were discussing them on Scott Street, um, and ended up determining that basically, after talking to that gentleman afterwards, that it um, was not just unwarranted, but it was more just a personal preference to help slow down traffic, not that it was a warranted way to slow down traffic. Uh, e stop signs are not to uh, control speed. They're not for that purpose, but a lot of people are in the assumption that they are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. McIntyre. Real, real quick. Um, with, with the stop signs, I know there's lots of different options. You can choose like the, the yield or slow down or, hey, there's a curve, watch out. Um, could you also look into some of those options? Because if, if this situation doesn't reach the benchmark of, of having a stop sign, I would think that it's a lower threshold for some of these other signs, which may tell people to think twice and then and navigate that turn better, if you could look in those. I, I think that would be a question of the analysis of the options. Yeah. Are. I mean, that would be very good to look at that and see if there's any other options that you can look at. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Lowe. Do we still have the mobile sign? I'm sorry? Do we still have the mobile sign? Yeah, the mobile speed sign. Can we move it down there? It flashes. It's for time. Yeah, let me check on it. We had to do some repairs on it, but I will get back to you. Let's do some help. Let's just move it down there. <coughs> it, it, no, it, it just flashes camera. <coughs> It, it right. does have like a, like a red, blue, like you right. see in some where like it go into the tip, it should be like right. siren. Okay, thank you. All right, is there anyone else in the audience has anything to say this evening? Anyone at all? Okay, again, thank you all for being here this evening. Committee reports, any committee reports for what? None tonight. Okay, let's go to resolutions. Mr. Collier, if you'd read uh, resolution, please. Resolution 14-14R, a resolution adopting a capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. We will be adopted. Resolution 14-14R. Second. This is a resolution we do every year as required by our charter. Um, we are required to give the council a um, uh, CIP, a capital improvement program, um, at least 90 days before we adopt our final budget. Final budget is due by the end of March. So um, again, as I say every year, this is just a blueprint for helping us to get the budget uh, finalized in January. Sort of a wish list for each of the departments um, as far as prioritizing equipment that needs to be replaced. Um, and 
Now, like I said, this is something we do every year. Thank you. Council, any questions? Yeah. Yes. Ms. This Ms. is not cast in stone. No, exactly. it's correct? a very good yes. document. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else? Mr. Collier, if you call for the vote, please. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zanbach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craig Lowry? Yes. Mr. Michael? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you, sir. And when you're ready, if you would, on the ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move we uh, suspend the rules of council on resolution 14-15R. Which one are we speaking of? 14-15R. Aren't we working on 14-R? We just did 14-R. We just, we just did that. It's this one right here. And then it's to pay the, pay the bond. Oh. I was going to explain that um, I was going to request that we do the uh, waive the rules of council to introduce this resolution. Um, we had a bill that came in after we had already done the agenda that requires a payment for a major loan on the 2nd of January. If the funds are not transferred before that time, we would not have sufficient funds to pay that loan payment in January. Um, the only other alternative, if we don't do this tonight, would be to wait until the first meeting in January to do this resolution. However, then the bill would be too late. And well, I would recommend that we do this instead. I'll second it. We have, in other words, this is a two-part right. two so We have to procedure. wait the rules, and then, yeah, then yep. we have to introduce it. Okay, thank you for bringing that in. I, I was stunned there for a moment. I'm looking at this one page and didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, that's Sorry, guys. <laughs> Not a problem. So I, I already have a motion to suspend the rules of council by Mr. Reynolds. And we have a second by Mr. Zanbach. And then once you are ready, you would, uh, are there any, is there any discussion on this tomorrow? Well, the rules, we wouldn't need that. Please, if you call for the vote, I beg your pardon. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craig Lowry. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yep. Rules are suspended. Thank you. Now we can we can go ahead and read that, I guess, at this point then. Is that correct? Yes. Resolution 14-15R, if you will. Resolution 14-15R, a resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the wastewater equipment replacement fund to wastewater operating fund. Mr. Mayor, move we adopt. Resolution 14-15R. Now is there any discussion? No discussion. We will go ahead and call for the vote, please. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Passed seven to zero. Thank you. When, when you're ready, sir, in the ordinance. Well, we haven't had two people in a long time. Thanks for bringing that up. I hope this one's lost. Is that any of them, man? It's 14-56 public hearing in action tonight in ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a rate agreement with MBI Solutions Incorporated. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to adopt 14-56. Second. Um, this is also an ordinance we do every year, this time of year, getting ready for next year. Um, on the back of your ordinance, you'll see the proposed um, rates um, it is the suggestion of the chief and myself as well that we increase the rates to keep with inflation at 1.4 percent increase this is for ambulance services any discussion yes sir uh, it is my understanding that when a citizen of the city of new carlisle uses the squad the ambulance service that citizen is not 
charged personally or directly. In other words, he turns the bill into his insurance company and we waive whatever his insurance company doesn't pay. That is my understanding, however, it does not say that anywhere here. That, you know, at this point, it is up to the discretion of the billing agency to waive that. I don't like that. Um, Chief Fultz, do you want to address that or do you want to interpret Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's in the agreement that we have, the overall agreement we have with NBI Solutions. Right, this uh, is just the That's rate. just the suggested rates increase to comply with the ambulance inflation rates nationally. Uh, it, it's a suggestion brought forth by MBI every year. Uh, almost every year we have an either up or down decision to make. But we do have that agreement in place and Correct. ready with Soft them. Soft right. Billing. Soft cool. billing. We send it to the insurance yeah. and then. Well, I know we've been doing it. Right. And I just right. wanted to make, make sure that we didn't stop. No, we still, uh, actually the term is now called balance billing, but it's the same, same concept. And, and just to reinforce your uh, question, I guess, uh, for the third quarter of this year, I just uh, signed the write-off report for MBI, meaning they exhausted all efforts to get as much money as they could possibly get from any source that was provided. And for the third quarter, I wrote off about almost $46,000. So that's money that we built. They tried to get as much money as they could, and that's just what's left over. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Mr. Carrier, if you'd call for the vote, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybarker? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? No. Mr. Reynolds? I have a question for me. So we are voting for the increase, correct? Ooh. We specify that that we're voting for the 1.4 increase because it says. It says in the ordinance. Well, oh, because it says you're like keep rate same. But I just want to make sure. But yes. You vote is yes. Yes. Okay. Voting yes. But just, okay. to, just double check with that real quickly. Okay. It does not. It, yeah, it doesn't say. It just says update rate schedule. It doesn't say if it's the increase or not. So keep up with the rate of inflation for such services, which is the second box to keep up with the rate of inflation. Okay, we all set? Okay, again, Mr. Carter, when you're ready, if you go ahead, please. Ordinance 14-57, Introduction, Public Area and Action on 1515, an ordinance amending section 1066 of the codified ordinance of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio regarding the cemetery and the general. Ordinance 14-58, introduction, public hearing, and action on 1515. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an addendum intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners regarding wastewater service. Can I say one thing? Yes. The addendum that goes with this ordinance and also the MOU that goes with the last ordinance will be in your emails either tomorrow or the next day. They are still going back and forth with the county to finalize this. Thank you for letting us know. Mr. Carter. Ordinance 14-59E, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract extension with the Clark County Sheriff's Office for policing services for the city of New Carlisle and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to adopt ordinance 14 590. Second. This is the extension of the current uh, sheriff's contract that we were talking about earlier. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Or have we already? No. <laughs> okay. okay. Mr. Connor, if you would, go for the vote. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Ray yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mr. Mayor McLaughlin? Absolutely. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you. And if you continue on, please. And you're ready. Ordinance 14-60, Introduction to Public Hearing and Action on 1515. An ordinance amending, subject to the approval of the electors of the City of New Carlisle, 
Section 880.04A of the codified ordinances of the City of Colorado in order to increase the rate of the municipal income tax of the city to 1.50% effective July 1, 2015. Ordinance 14-61, Introduction to Public Hearing and Action on 1515. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding, MOU, with the Board of Clark County Commissioners. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, other businesses? Anyone? We are all other business, is that correct? Yes, yes, we are. Uh, Mr. Lara, would you like to say something about something coming up? Yeah, just as we are last meeting before the new year, don't forget the, the Heritage Flight Express for this annual bar drops coming up on New Year's Eve on the 31st. Uh, Main Street will close, keep in mind, pass it around. Main Street will close at 8 o'clock on that night. And uh, the event will start at 9 and run until about 1 a.m. Uh, so bring your friends, family, it's a nice, Good event. There'll be ice carvers there, food, a lot of, a lot of shops in town will be open. Uh, the festival committee will be doing a 50 50 drawing to help you know raise money to keep the ball drop going. So if you want to come join us for New Year's, we'd be glad to have you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Zamba. This is not city business at all, but I'm quite happy to say that as of tomorrow, actually on tomorrow, my wife and I will celebrate our 53rd wedding. That's 100. That, that's 106 in white here. <laughs> Anyone else out of business? Anyone? Okay. Would you mind reading the rest of that, please, Mr. Yes, Mayor. City offices will be closed on Wednesday, December 24th, Thursday, December 25th, Friday, December 26th for Christmas, the Christmas holiday. City offices will also be closed on New Year's Day, January 1, 2015. And city offices will also be closed on Martin Luther King Day, Monday, January 19, 2015. And I will remind the council that the council meeting next week will be on Tuesday night, the 20th. Uh, the new parallel ball drop is Wednesday, December the 31st, 2014. Uh, do I have this correctly? That that starts around 9 o'clock? Starts at 9. 9 o'clock on Main But Main Street closes at 8, so just. Okay. And there will be a joint government meeting Monday, January 26, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. at Bethel Township. And I would add a reminder that the council has a work session on 1.12.15 at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. That is all, Mayor. Thank you. Executive session is done tonight. Uh, one more time for the audience out there. Does anyone like to say anything before we conclude the scene? Thank you all for being here. We certainly appreciate it. That's what we're here for. We'd love to have more people. I just hope we wish everybody happy holidays. That's a very good idea. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. I appreciate it. Mr. Zamba. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I move. We adjourn. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.